You're watching Let the Quran Speak. A Harvard neurosurgeon, Ibn Alexander, became a believer in the afterlife after he had a near-death experience. These experiences are surprisingly common. They include out-of-body sensations, images of events, religious figures, even heaven. What lies behind these experiences? Here with me to answer those questions, Brother Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Center. Uh, Brother Shabir, maybe you can first begin by describing what a near-death experience is, because some people might not be aware of what it is. Yes, uh, for in, in, in the 1960s, a certain Dr. Raymond Moody uh, began a series of publications in, in which he highlighted the experiences of uh, many people who uh, may uh, reach a, a situation that is very close to death. And uh, in, in that situation, uh, the person um, comes back out of it with, with uh, the memory that he or she uh, had been outside of the body. So this is sometimes referred to as OBE, or an out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes a person was on the operating table and uh, comes back describing um, his or her uh, hovering over the operating table with the body still on the operating table and uh, seeing what the doctors are doing to his or her body. Um, uh, in, in some extreme cases, we, we have uh, reports where a person might have been uh, pronounced uh, uh, clinically dead and uh, then the person is somehow uh, surprisingly revived. And, and this person may come back with some uh, memory of uh, having been out of the body and uh, having met God or met Jesus or uh, went through a, a tunnel of uh, unimaginable brightness and having come back. Uh, and sometimes these uh, individuals um, turn their lives around following this event. Uh, mm -hmm. They feel themselves to have been called by God uh, and been sent back to earth with, uh, with a mission uh, to now not only to live a, a wholesome and, and uh, righteous life, but also to call people to a similar sort of life. Mm -hmm. So how can we understand what lies behind these experiences? I mean, some religious people would say, uh, the soul has separated itself from the body and then returned back. What are your thoughts? Yes, of course, the, the religious interpretation of this is uh, usually what people come back with. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, some from the medical community will, will say, well, you know, nothing like this is possible because science uh, explains everything in terms of uh, material things. Uh, things we can touch and, and, uh, and, and study in a labo laboratory. If we talk about the mind and about the soul, uh, this is something that we can't really uh, put our finger on. Mm -hmm. What was and interesting about Dr. Alexander's uh, article is that he, he had that view initially until yes. he experienced it himself. Exactly. This view ha has become popular and was popularized by an Australian doctor. I forget her name at the moment, but uh, she uh, has said that uh, the, the human brain is, is such that we have uh, a, a built-in coping mechanism. So if pain becomes too severe, uh, driving us to the point of, of death, then the, the brain copes with this by imagining a very serene sort of experience. Hmm. Uh, and, and that helps the person to cope at this very critical moment. So the person gets close to death, has this experience, then the person is revived. The person now feels, yeah, I've been beyond death and I've come back. And, and death was a beautiful thing. You know, it was the most beautiful experience in my life. To her, this is a coping mechanism that, that kicks in. But now this uh, Dr. Ibn Alexander, having been brought up and schooled in this kind of uh, theory. He's a neurosurgeon uh, after all. Yes, now he uh, experiences for himself what others had, uh, had described. And he feels that his experience is, is unique. What he describes is that uh, he uh, was uh, admitted to the hospital where he was, in fact, working as a neurosurgeon. Uh, and uh, this was after he uh, had fallen into a coma for, for, uh, and, and that lasted for several days. Uh, the, what the doctors had described in his case was that an E. coli bacteria uh, was, uh, had, had entered into his spinal uh, fluid uh, and um, uh, was eating away at, at his brain. Uh, to the extent that his, uh, the, the, uh, that, that level of brain activity, which is associated with humans as opposed to the, the animal brain, uh, became totally shut down effectively. 
and, and this is how it is described by the doctors who were supervising him and, uh, as he says, were, were watchful over him in, in minute detail continuously over this period. Mm -hmm. uh, so while his brain was, uh, from, from a medical point of view, shut down, he was having this experience of, uh, of, of being in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. So how can we understand what was going on there? Uh, yes, and, and I put, I, I put, you know, I, I said afterlife, he didn't put it in this mm -hmm. way. He, he tried to he stay... He had a fantastical vision of he, you know, very good things, uh, clouds he, and uh, people. And bright things. lights, things that he wanted Birds. to describe almost as angels, but he hesitated lest he gives a, a name that, uh, that, that would prejudge the experience that he had. Um, he wants to put this in as scientific terms as, as possible and just describe the actual things that he saw without trying to name them. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the things that he saw will, will help believers to, to um, uh, at least some people will feel, feel that yes, this confirms what we already thought existed. We thought angels and this man saw something like this, uh, bright, luminous beings um, uh, uh, parading through the sky, leaving uh, traces behind them as they, as they, as they go. Uh, he uh, met uh, a, a woman of extraordinary beauty who assured him uh, that, um, uh, that he has nothing to fear. And uh, some of these uh, descriptions actually remind me of uh, passages from the Quran. For example, in the Quran in Surah, uh, the 41st Surah, in the 30th verse, it says that the angels descend on, on the believer, saying to them, uh, do not fear nor grieve, we are your friends in this world and in the life hereafter. And the commentators say that this is actually what happens at the time of death. The angel comes and says this. Mm -hmm. and, and what uh, Ibn Alexander describes is actually something similar to this. So uh, do you think that we should take these uh, experiences seriously? I mean, uh, on, the, on the other hand, there, there are individuals from different religious traditions that have their own uh, near-death experiences that relate to their religious traditions only. Yes, I think we, we cannot uh, play God and dismiss the experiences of people. When people are describing their experiences which are very real to them, uh, we, we are not in a position to say, no, that did not happen. You know, if, if I say I see a red dot in the sky and, and you say, no, you don't see it, you can't deny that I have seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it may be that something is faulty in my vision, perhaps I see things uh, wh which are not really there, but, but you have no way of knowing whether or not uh, I, my vision is faulty or whether I'm imagining too much. You can only say that you didn't see it, but, mm -hmm. but you can't deny my, my real experience. Uh, so it, when we have so many reports of people having these experiences, we cannot just simply dismiss all of them. Uh, we, we have to take them seriously, catalog them, and try to analyze them on an aggregate level and see if perhaps uh, some scientific explanation is available for this, or as Ibn Alexander is concluding, there, there's no scientific explanation yet. And, and we really uh, are in, in, uh, in need of, of a, an explanation that will make sense of all of this uh, phenomena. And uh, of course, for in many cases, uh, as in the case of Ibn Alexander himself, uh, people find themselves returning to religion, returning to God, going back to church, um, uh, going back to things which are religious. Now your question is, uh, what about the fact that many people of many different religions have similar types of experiences? Mm -hmm. And in some cases, the experiences seem to be very specific for that particular religion mm -hmm. in which the person has already been brought up. Um, and, and it case. seems to confirm their, their own belief system. Yes. So uh, we, we must say that in, in the end, it is possible that God is drawing to himself people through many different religious paths. And uh, the, the paths that people ha are choosing for themselves are, in a way, leading to God. Uh, and, and God is uh, making that path continue to serve the purpose of leading the person towards uh, God. It may be uh, that uh, one religion will not actually fit all people. People are of many different kinds, many different persuasions, many different historical origins and upbringings. And uh, to present one religion with its uh, total system as the one for everyone uh, may not actually be practical. And God is doing what is practical and, and drawing people to him through the vehicles that they have already started out with. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever described the Prophet Muhammad's journey to heaven as a near-death experience? Uh, 
No one has described it in that way. His uh, journey was um, thought to be um, by, by some early Muslims as having occurred in a, in a sleep state and some thought that uh, he, his, his entire body was, was transported into heaven. Mm -hmm. If it happened in, in a sleep state, then one would say that this was a kind of an out-of-body experience. Okay. Uh, some, uh, interestingly, in, in light of your question, uh, I may mention that Ian uh, Wilson, uh, in, in his book, The Bible is History, uh, uh, described the uh, resurrection of Jesus uh, as uh, being a kind of uh, uh, near-death experience, um, that, that he came close and, and went over to the other side and came back with this um, uh, experience that, of, of things that he can now talk about and, and uh, influence his disciples about. All right, very interesting. Thank you for that. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. <laughs> 